Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this afternoon, caretaker found dead at a Pembroke Hall primary. The body of the watchman caretaker for Pembroke Hall primary was found riddled with gunshots on the school compound on Wednesday morning. The police are currently processing the scene. Parents were called to collect their children. Classes have been suspended for the rest of the day. Police probing reported accidental shooting at a train in college. An investigation is underway into a shooting incident involving a policeman at the police's training college, Twickenham Park, St. Catherine, on Tuesday. It is reported that the cop may have accidentally shot himself. Reports are that about 6 a.m., he was in a parked car getting ready for duty when an explosion was heard. Checks were made and he was found bleeding profusely from a wound to his thigh. Further checks revealed a spent shell casing. His loaded licensed firearm was retrieved by his colleagues and the injured cop was rushed to the nearby Spanish Town Hospital where he was admitted for treatment. Hanover woman gone down in front of child. A woman was gone down in close proximity to her child along Woodland Road in Hanover late Tuesday. Reports are that residents heard an explosion following which the body of the woman was observed on the ground next to her crying child. The woman has since been identified as a 30-year-old Brittany Gibbs of Woodland District. Jury begins deliberations in Omar Collymore murder trial. The jury began deliberations Wednesday in the Omar Collymore murder trial where he along with three co-accused are before the court for the double murder of his wife Simone Campbell Collymore and the taxi operator Winston Walters. A verdict is expected before 4 p.m. Campbell Collymore and Walters were shot dead on January 2, 2018 by two gunmen outside the gates of the Forest Ridge apartment complex in Red Hills, St. Andrew, where Campbell Collymore lived with her husband, Omar. They were shot by two men who traveled on motorcycles. Omar Zako accused Archer Keela Edwards, Michael Adams, and Duane Pink. It is alleged that Collymore contracted Adams to have Campbell Collymore murdered so he could claim life insurance benefits from policies that belonged to his wife worth $100 million. Moments after the deliberation started, the family members of Campbell Collymore were seen huddled in a corner deep in prayer. The prayer session was led by Campbell Collymore's mother. In the prayer, she claimed victory in Jesus' name, saying, Not one of them shall go free. Lord, I tell you thanks. 29-year-old woman goes missing from Gore Terrace at Kingston home. 29-year-old Naomi Dixon of Gore Terrace at Kingston 10 has been missing since Saturday, May 11. She is of dark complexion, medium build, and about 160 centimeters or 5 feet to 3 inches tall. Reports from the Grand Spent Police are that Dixon was last seen at home about 9 p.m. When last seen, she was dressed in a blue nightgown with a bear on the front. All efforts to contact her have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Naomi Dixon is asked to contact the Grand Spent Police at 876-755-1597, the 119 Police Emergency Number, or the nearest police station. Man charged in female security guards murder offered the bail son remanded. The St. James Parish Court has granted bail in the sum of $600,000 to a St. James man accused of the March 17 shooting death of security officer Natasha Smith, while his son has been remanded until June 12 when the case will be mentioned. Will Fort Cook, 57, and his 21-year-old son, Lavon Cook, are charged with murder and wounding with intent arising from the incident, which, according to reports, took place in Flower Hill, St. James, and resulted in a witness being injured. They were given the new court date when they appeared in court on Thursday, May 9. During Thursday's bail application, which was made on the due as a behalf by their attorney, Henry McCurdy, presiding parish judge Natisha Fairclough Hilton, expressed a concern about the identification of Wilford Cook as a suspect in the report. Here it is that allegations are being made against Mr. Wilford Cook that he was one of the shooters 
in relation to this matter, but the witness who identifies him as the shooter goes on an identification parade and does not point him out as the shooter. I find that to be very curious, as that weakens, in some aspect, the strength of the evidence against Mr. Cook, said Fairclough Hilton. Also, this is a situation where the accused Wilford Cook, based on his defense, is known to the witness. On the day of the incident, when the report was made about who did the shooting, it does not appear that Mr. Wilford the Cook's name was called on that day. It also does not appear that after the allegations were made, that Mr. Wilford Cook removed himself from the location, Fairclough Hilton continued, referencing concern about whether the senior cook would be a flight to risk. On that basis, Fairclough Hilton offered the bill to Wilford Cook in the sum of $600,000 with a surety, with instructions that he must relocate from St. James, report to the police three times a week, and surrender his travel documents. The senior cook was also ordered not to have any contact with any witnesses in the case, nor to be seen in St. James, except for when he is to attend a court. Meanwhile, in relation to the son, Lavon Cook, Fairclough Hilton denied a bail for him on the grounds of the prosecution's concern that he left the parish of St. James and did not initially surrender himself, despite being contacted by the police as a person of interest. The report from the outset indicated that Lavon Cook was one of the shooters. This incident took place on March 17, and after a police officer spoke to him, he remained away from St. James. At this time, I have considered bail for Mr. Lavon Cook, and the bail is considered and denied, said Fairclough Hilton. The court was also told that several documents are still outstanding from the prosecution's case file to include the medical certificate, the first responder's statement, and the ballistic certificate. The matter was subsequently set for mention on June 12, and both cooks were taken back into custody. According to the allegations, on March 17 at 3.30 p.m., Smith and a female relative were inside their house with other family members when two armed men entered the yard and opened gunfire at them through a bedroom window before fleeing. The police were summoned and on their arrival, Smith was seen with a gunshot wound to her chest. The two women were taken to hospital where Smith was pronounced dead and the other woman was treated and released. Following investigations, Wilford and Lavon Cook were arrested and subsequently charged. Meta services give positive outlook for rainfall in coming months. Weather experts are expecting that Jamaica will soon be seeing an increase in rainfall. Evan Thompson, principal director of the Meteorological Service of Jamaica, revealed on Tuesday that the projection is far above normal rainfall over the next three months. He said, having come out of a drought period, we are now in the secondary rainy months of the year, in terms of May producing more rainfall normally, and so that is expected to continue, and then as we go through June, July. Additionally, he revealed that there are some other climatic patterns that would suggest that rainfall is going to increase as we go through the summer months of the year. Accordingly, he said we are not expecting that we will have a continuation of drought conditions for very much longer, and we could even be moving to experiencing rainfall that is above our norm. He told the news that there is a higher probability of above normal rainfall for central parishes than for the eastern and western ends of the island. We're coming out of a drought period. We're also now in the secondary rainy month of the year in terms of May producing more rainfall normally. And so that is expected to continue. And then as we go through June, July, we, we're seeing some other climatic patterns that would suggest that rainfall is going to increase as we go through the summer months of the year. So we're not expecting that we will have a continuation of drought conditions for very much longer. Um, of course, time will tell, but the projection or the outlook is suggesting that the, the drought is likely to be broken and we could even be moving to, to experiencing rainfall that is above.